catching scripture beat down. Beat down. If you wanna fight, see what we build it here, and I call this a little construction site. Here's where First of all, I want to say all praises to Ohio, Masha Mishai, Wak Wak. For those who don't know, what I just said is all praises to the Father in the name of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Okay? We are the brothers from the gathering of Christ's church. My name, for those who don't know, is Brother Naya. Beside me is Brother Shemar. Okay? So without any further ado, let's continue the lesson, the testament of Job. Okay? So just a quick uh, no. trivial question. No. What lineage was Job from? Esau. Esau, right? And who are the Edomites today? European, Caucasians. Caucasians, right? The majority of the Caucasians are Esau, right? So, when we went into the, the, the Testament of Job, it told us when Job was telling his children before he died, after he went through all of his affliction, that Satan tried to bring on him. Job was telling his children that the most I blessed him with again, with Dinah. This same Dinah was the sister of the 12 tribes, Jacob's 12 sons. The same Dinah that we read about in the Bible that got raped by Shechem. That became the wife of Job. And we also learn, going back into the book of Joshua, that Job was in Egypt when the children of Israel was in bondage. You can go to the book of Joshua, chapter 67, and be able to find all that information. Job was actually one of Pharaoh's counselors. He made counsel to Pharaoh. He gave Pharaoh counsel of how he could, how Pharaoh should be able to depopulate the children of Israel or lessen them. Job was one of the counselors along with Jeth Jethro. Jethro is Moses' father, became Moses' father-in-law when Moses ran out of Egypt and went into the land of Midian. This is all the information that you would not find in the Bible. Okay, so, yes. One question. Yeah. Um, I remember asking your question on Job's perfection, right? Mm -hmm. and one of the things you pulled out was that um, through his charity, it was one of the things that led to his perfection. Mm -hmm. And I want to ask you, right? As in tax everyone, it's mm -hmm. not just you, right? Yeah. Because Hebrews, in Hebrews it tells us to move on to perfection. Definitely. That we should strive for perfection, it, right? Definitely. definitely. So is charity part of reaching perfection? Definitely. Okay. Of course. 100%. Of uh, course. I just have to ask that question yeah. because if we understand that, then we understand why Christ told the younger Jewish to sell all these things, they're going to be perfect. Right. So that thing you to court. Exactly. And we see Job, that's something he did. He's very charitable. Mm -hmm. People would come from all amongst the land. Mm -hmm. We you know, you read about that last week, right? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to touch on that. Right? Actually, I mean, you're right, I and mean, there's a scripture to back that up. I believe one moment in the first Corinthians where it says that if you have uh, faith and love. First Corinthians 13. First first Corinthians 13, right? Charity, you know, First yeah. Corinthians 13 and 13. Okay, uh, we're gonna start start from uh, start start from the 12 verse. Go to First Corinthians uh, 13 and 12. This is just to uh, back up what uh, Brother Zerai is saying. Okay, you can have everything else in the world. You can be helping old ladies and old men every day. You can, be, you know. Doing whatever you think is right, but if you have not charity, now you know charity. A, a whole, a, a lot of things come under charity. When when I say charity, what comes to mind? Love, you need love, you it. All of those things. That's all. All of those things come under charity. Charity is not just you giving. Charity is also you loving. Charity is a hospitality. 
So this is what the scripture is saying. Read 1 Corinthians 13 and 12 for me. 1 Corinthians 13 and 12. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even, as also I am known. And now, albeit faith, hope, charity. Read that again. Start over again. And now abide it. And now abide it. Faith. And now abide it. Faith. Read. Hope. Charity. These three. But the greatest of these is charity. The greatest of these is what? Charity. The greatest of these is charity. Hospitality. Love. Giving. Charity. The greatest of all that you can have. Hope you can have faith, but that won't be enough. You need charity to make that complete. So, just to you know, back up what the brother is saying with the scripture charity, you have to have charity, especially to go on to the perfection. All right, uh, a lot of people say, Well, nobody can be perfect. Yes, it can be perfect. Why would Christ say in the scriptures, be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect? Christ came on the earth and walked the earth as a perfect man. So we all can strive for perfection. Anybody's telling you that you can't be perfect, that's a lie. And we know exactly where he's coming from or who he's coming from. Because we know that Satan is the father of lies. You can't be perfect. You keeping those Ten Commandments, that's perfection in itself. There's 630 laws that the children of Israel had to live by. You had the Levites then that had fringes on their garments to represent each and every one of those laws. They, those fringes were to, for the, the, the priests to remember those laws. And the elder Rakai was going all, all of that today. People having fringes and the one Israelite will see you not wearing fringes and say, well, brother, you're not really an Israelite. Where's your fringes? What well, brother, listen, does me making, does, does me wearing fringes make me a more, more or less than an Israelite? Is, are you being an Israelite, isn't it through, through the, your blood? Isn't it supposed to be in you? Your blood like coming from your father? And his father and, and, and your forefathers and his forefathers? Because all those Israelites out there that have fringes, make sure that it's 613. So that for each one of those fringes, you're remembering each one of those laws. It's a reminder for you to remember each one of those 613 laws. So it's not the out, you know, the scripture says, render your heart and not your garments. It's not what you have on the outside, it's what, it's what you have on the inside. Okay? So, yeah. We can't be perfect. Don't let nobody say you can't be perfect. Strive for perfection. You can do it. Any one of us can do it as long as we obey the law, statutes, and commandments and have faith in the most time. Simple. It's not hard. Let's go into the book of Job. Let's go into the testament of Job. Excuse me. So we left off at chapter 6. Let's get it back. Alright, so the testament of Job, chapter 6. And you can read. Testament of Job, chapter 6, verse 1. And immediately my wife came near me, crying aloud and weeping. She said, Job, Job, how long wilt thou sit upon the dumb hill outside of the city, pondering yet for a while and expecting to obtain your hope for salvation? So what are we going into here? We have Job now lost all his possessions. He lost all his cattle, all his livestock. He lost his house, he lost his children, and now Job is just outside, sitting on a dung hill. Everybody knows what dung is, right? Right? Yeah. This is Job making the dung hill for his bed in his, in his chair. And it's just him and his wife. And his wife, she, before she met, came upon all these atrocities, she was living in splendor. Now, she's, she has a job as how one of Job's servants had when, when Job had all his riches and all his glory. His wife became as, as one of Job's servants. 
having to do all kind of manual work just to eat bread. So now this is what Job's wife coming to him and crying to him now, saying, listen, how long? How long are you going to stay in there? How long? Listen, do something. Go talk to the whole star. Listen, why don't you just curse him? And we're going to go into that to see now how she lost faith and how even Satan even used her and deceived her. Read. And I have been wandering from place to place, roaming about as hired servant. Behold, thy memory has already died away from earth. So she's telling Job, listen, nobody remembers you no more. It's God out of the earth because of the condition that you're in right now. Read. And my sons and the daughters that I carry on my bosom and the labors and pains that I sustain have been for nothing. And thou sittest in the Maldorian Maldor state. Maldor state of soreness and worms, passing the nights in the cold air. And I have undergone all trials and troubles and pains day and night until I succeeded in bringing bread to thee. For your surplus of bread is no longer allowed to me. And as I can scarcely take my own food and divide it between So she's telling Job, listen, I can't, I can't do this no more. Furthermore, that the bread that I'm getting, I can't even divide it between me and you. This is how much faith she's lost. Read. I pondered in my heart that it was not right that thou shouldest be in pain and hunger for bread. And so I ventured to go to the market without bashfulness. And when the bread seller told me, give me money and thou shalt have bread, I disclosed to him our state of distress. Then I heard him say, if thou hast no money, hand me the hair of thy head. So this is Satan. This was Satan disguised as a beggar coming up to Job's wife and telling her, listen, you want some bread? Give me some money. She's like, I don't got no money. Okay. Cut off your ear. Cut off your ear and you'll be able to get these loads right here. And this is what she did. Let's see what happened. Read. If thou hast no money, hand me the hair of thy head and take three loaves of bread in order that ye may live on these for three days. And I yielded to the wrong and said to him, Rise and cut off my hair. And he rose in disgrace, cut off with the scissors the hair of my head on the marketplace while the crowd stood by and wandered. Who would then not be astonished saying, it is Cytus, the wife of Job, who had 14 curtains to cover her inner sitting room and doors within doors so that he was greatly honored who would be brought near her. And now behold, she barters off her hair for bread who had camels laden with goods, and they brought into remote lands to the poor, and now she sells her hair for bread. So now she was a top of the top. She said, look, look, this is what everybody's saying, that I'm selling my hair for bread. This is how, this is how low I look in the eyes of the people. That was her perception of it. Read. Behold her who had seven tables immovably set in her house at which each poor man and each stranger ate and now she sells her hair for bread behold her who had the basin wherewith to wash wash her feet made of gold and silver and now she walks upon the ground and sells her hair for bread behold her who had her garments made of byssus interwoven with gold and now she exchanges her hair for bread. So this is what she's saying that she's saying to her husband. She's like, I want all of this. I had the finest. I was washing my foot in gold basin. And now I have to stoop so low and sell my hair for bread. She can't believe it. it it's, a, it it's a total shock to her. She's traumatized by this. She's like, well, how, how could this be? How could this be? And it, it, it would be like, you know, we, we live in today, we're comfortable. If all of that we had was taken away and we were out on the street homeless, know that we know all the truth. We know we're in Israel, we know we're supposed to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, we know that we're supposed to have faith in the most high. But all the things that we had when we came to the truth that was taken away from us, how would we react to the most high? What would we be saying? Would we have faith and say, well, the most I give it? Uh, and 
and, and the Most High taketh away. Would we be saying that? What a blessing be the Most High. Would we be saying that? Read. Behold her who had couches of gold and of silver, and now she sells her hair for bread. In short, then, Job, after the many things that have been said to me, I now say in one word to thee, since the feebleness of my heart has crushed my bones, rise then and take these loaves of bread and enjoy them, and then speak some word against the Most High and die. So she's like, listen, I got some, this is the last of the bread that I got right here. Let's take it, let's eat it, get yourself full, and then speak, speak some, some blasphemous words to the Most High, curse it, and, 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 and die. Because he's not helping you. Your state that you're in right now, you're not supposed to be in this joke. Look how good you were. Look how much people you fed. Look how much people you helped. Why is he doing it? Why is this happening to us? This is, this is what she's saying. Let's hear Job's reply. Read. For I too would exchange the torpor of death for the sustainance of my body. So she's like, yeah, I would, I would exchange the torpor of death. I would rather take death than making all of this that's happening to you, Job, happen to me. I'd rather die. That's what she said. Read. But I replied to her, Behold, I have seen for these seven years plague stricken. So Job had these plagues on him for seven years. Seven years, Job had to lie down on a dunghill with worms all over his body from head to toe in poverty. Read. And I have, and I have stood the worms of my body, and I was not weighed down in my soul by all these pains. And as to the word which thou sayest, speak some word against God and die, together with thee I will sustain the evil which thou seest, and let us endure the ruin of all that we have. So Job is like, listen, come, come join me and let's sustain, let's, uh, let's sustain this evil that you're seeing. Let's, let's, let's endure this. Because it's only going to be for a time. Job understood this. This is the thing that his wife didn't understand. Job knew that all of this was going to come upon him. The angel of the Most High told him this. He told him this. He goes, because you, because you, 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 you chopped down Satan's grove, his house of worship, you went and mashed that down, Job. Listen, he's going to come against you. And you're going to have to endure this, his afflictions like an athlete. Meaning a strong man, you're going to have to endure everything that Satan comes and brings against you. Read. Start from where left off. Yet thou, yet thou desires that we should say some word against God, and that he should be exchanged for the great Pluto. Why dost thou not remember those great goods which we possess? If these goods come from the lands of the Most High, should not we also endure evils? and be high-minded in everything until the Most High will have mercy again and show pity to us? Does thou not cease the seducer stand behind thee and confound, and confound thy thoughts in order that thou shouldest beguile me? So Job knew that everything that his wife was saying to him concerning how she was and how she is now, that was all because of Satan. Job saw Satan behind her, making her say all of these things to confound her, to try to fool Job into cursing God. Job saw all of that, especially in his low state that he was. He saw exactly who was controlling his wife. Read. And he turned to Satan and said, Why dost thou not come openly to me? Stop hiding thyself, thy wretched one. Does the lion show his strength in the weasel cage? Or does the bird fly in the basket? I now tell thee, go away and wage thy war against me. So Job is calling out Satan and said, listen, stop hiding. Come out and confront me face to face. Stop trying to use my own people against you. And this is what the devil does. This is what he does. Sometimes the devil knows that you're too strong for him. So he'll use anybody else around you, especially those in your household, in your household that's close to you. He'll use that person to come against you. 
Because he's like, okay, which better to, okay, you know what? I'll use her wife. Or I'll use her husband to come against her, to stop her from doing this. Because he knows that, okay, this is who you're with every day. This is who you see every day. This is who you interact with every day. If he can be able to solve that relationship, the house, a house divided against itself cannot stand. He knows that. So there would be no order in that house. It would just be chaos. It would be one against another. This is what he did to Job's wife. And Job saw Job saw And Job was like, listen, nah, don't even come and face me. Come and face me. Read. Then he went from behind my wife and placed himself before me crying. And he said, behold, Job, and heal and give way to thee flesh while I am spirit. Thou art place stricken, stricken, but I am in great trouble. For I am like a wrestler contested with a wrestler who has in a single hand combat torn down his antagonist, antagonist. antagonist and covered him with dust and broken every limb of his. Whereas the other one who lies beneath, having displayed his bravery, gives forth sounds of triumph, testifying to his own superior excellence. So Job is like, listen, I mean, Satan said to Job, man, I don't know how you do this. I don't know how you're doing this. Because I'm, it's like I'm contending, I'm a wrestler contending against another wrestler, and I'm beating them up. But I don't beat them up. Like you're more better than me, even though I'm your shoulder all kind of blows at you. You're still sustaining and not giving up. Read. Thus thou, O Job, art beneath and place and stricken with pain and pain, and yet thou hast carried the victory in the wrestling match with me. And behold, I yield to thee. And then he left me abashed. Now, my children, do you also show a firm heart in all the evil that happens to you? For greater than all things is firmness of heart. Okay, so he's telling, the Satan is telling Job, like, listen, man, all right, man, I'm, I'm done. You, you want? That's okay, because there's nothing else that I can throw at you right now that's going to make you give up and curse God or make you stop living for the most time. There's nothing else I can do to you. I've, I've, the, the only thing that is left is for me to take your life, but Satan knows that he couldn't do that because that was a decree from the Most High. The Most High told him, listen, do whatever you want to do. Do, do whatever. I'm going to remove the edge from around you. And you do whatever you want to do, but don't take his life. He understood that. Satan knew that. And that was the only thing left for him to do. He, he did everything else to Job. Kill off his children. He, everybody around him. Took away his riches, his glory, all the splendor. But he couldn't take away his what? His life. Okay? Chapter 7. Testament of Job, chapter 7, verse 1. At this time the kings heard what had happened to me, and they rose and came to me each from his land to visit me and comfort me. The scripture says, When your ways please the most high, he maketh even your enemy to be at peace with you. This is what happened here. This is what happened. Job, Job never gave up on, on, on having faith in the most high. To sin, I had to, had to say, okay, listen, all right, guys, no more. This is, this is the scripture. This is what the scripture is talking about. When your when you're ways please the most high, even your very enemy, whoever it is, have to be at peace with you. Have to. Verse 2. And when they came near me, they cried with a loud voice, and each tore his clothes. Start from the first verse. Testament of Job, chapter 7, verse 1. At this time the kings heard what had happened to me, and they rose and came to me, each from his land, to visit me and to comfort me. And when they came near me, they cried with a loud voice and each tore his clothes. And after they had prostrated themselves, touching the earth with their heads, they sat down next to me for seven days and seven nights. So you had Job's fellow kingsmen 
which are Edomites, that were king in other lands that, that was occupied by the sons of Esau, that heard of what happened to Job, and they're just coming, to, you know, to see what, what's going on. How can how how did this happen to their brother? Their brother who was a king, because John was a king in the land of us. How did this happen? Furthermore, they, they wanted to see if this was really Job. And we're gonna see that. Read. For seven days and seven nights, and none spoke a word. They were four in numbers. Eliphaz. Eliphaz. Well, it says Eliphaz, but that's a misspell. But it's actually Eliphaz. It's when you go into the scripture. Read. Eliphaz, the king of Teman, and Balad, and so far, and Elihu. Mm -hmm. And when they had taken their seat, they conversed about what had happened to me. Now when for the... Now when for time, first time, they had come to me and I had shown them my precious stones, they were astonished and said, If us three kings, all our possessions, would be brought together into one, it would not come up to the precious stones of Joab, Jobab's kingdom. When Job was in his splendor, not all his glory, they would come to visit Job, all these three kings, and Job would be showing him all his precious things and all his riches. And they were like, man, man you, you know, you know, you know, if we all put our stuff together, you know, <laughs> it wouldn't even come close to what Job has. Right? This is this is what it is. Read. For thou art of great greater nobility than all of all the people of the east. And when therefore they now came to the land of us, Asitus, or us, or us. To visit me, they asked in the city, where is Jobab, the ruler of this whole land? And they told them concerning me, he sitteth upon the dung hill outside of the city, for he has not entered the city for seven years. And they again, they inquired concerning my possessions, and there was revealed to them all that happened to me. I, not to go off topic, but I just remembered something. Whoever watched that movie are, and this, just, this, this is to go in what uh, the, the whole dope joke sitting on a dunghill. That's to show you that you have to go through some stuff, especially to see, you know, the blessings of the most dying. Whoever saw that movie, Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. And it was about this guy who was in jail for a murder that he couldn't, didn't commit. They said that he killed his wife, but he didn't really actually kill his wife. He, he was actually framed for that, right? And they put him in jail and all of that. And, you know, he learned in jail and he started digging. He was in jail every night, digging, finding a way out because they were treating him like, you know, treating him like no good in jail. To the point where he dug and he dug, he dug a tunnel deep on the other side of the jail. But the thing is, just to make a long story short, when finally he came to leave in the jail, the tunnel that he had, uh, dug, it led to a sewer. And that same sewer, where when you went to the the, the trees, or the toilet, and you do, you know, the second one, <laughs> the number two, that's where all the excrement would go, and that's what he had to crawl out through, go through all of that for for for, for a good business, just to have his freedom. So you got you got to go through some excrement, you know. I'm not gonna use that four little word, but you know what I'm talking about. Just to see the next the other end of the tunnel. <laughs> okay, continue. And there was revealed to them all that happened to me. And when they had learned this, what, they, verse, what verse is that? Verse eleven. Testament of Job, chapter seven, verse eleven. And when they had learned this, they went out of the city with the inhabitants. And my fellow citizens pointed me out to them. But these demonst remonstrated and said, Surely this is not Jobab. And while they hesitated, there said Eliphaz, the king of Teman, Come, let us step near and see. And when they came near, I remembered them and wept very much when I learned the purpose of their journey. And I threw earth upon my head. And while shaking my head, I revealed unto them that I was Job. And when they saw me shake my head, they threw themselves down upon the ground 
all overcome with emotion. And while their hosts were standing around, I saw the three kings lie upon the ground for three hours like dead. They, they, they couldn't believe it. They couldn't, they couldn't believe this is Job. They were like, this could not, this can't be our blood. Read. Then they rose and said to each other, we cannot believe that this is Job. And finally, after they had for 70 day, seven days inquired after everything concerning me and searched for my flocks and other possessions, they said, do we not know how many goods were sent by him to the cities and villages around about to be given to the poor, aside from all that was given away by him within his own house? How then could he have fallen into such a state of perdition and misery? And after the seven days, Elihu said to the kings, Come, let us step near and examine him accurately, whether he is truly Jobab or not. So at this time, when they're all conversing amongst themselves, these three kings, they were far away from Job. It's not like they were right there next to Job looking. These brothers are at least 20, 30 feet away from Job. And they're saying, listen, we don't know for sure if it's him. Come, let, let us go closer to really see. But because of, and we're going we're gonna to see because of, you know, what Job was around or what was around Job, the dominant and all that, they, they didn't want to go nowhere near him. Read. And they, being not half a mile distant, <laughs> and they being what? Not, being not half a mile distant from his malodorous body, they rose and sat near, carrying so, perfume. So, so, so they were a half a mile away from Job. And whenever they went near with him, they would have to spray some, some perfume. Just like when you know you have air freshener, you have, you have to spray it just to get rid of that smell every time they came closer to Job. While their soldiers went with them and few fragrant incense around them, around about them, so that they could come near me. And after they had thus passed three hours covering the way with aroma, they drew near, and Eliphaz began and said, Art thou indeed Job, our fellow king? Art thou the one who owned the great glory? Art, art thou he who once shone like the sun of day upon the whole earth? Art thou he who once resembled the moon and the stars? Effulgently? Effulgent? Effulgent throughout the night? And I answered him and said, I am. And thereupon all wept and lamenting, and they sang a royal song of lamentation, lamentation, their whole army joining them in a chorus. And Eliphaz said to me, Art thou he who had ordered seven thousand sheep to be given for the clothing of the poor? Whether then had gone the glory of thy throne. So they couldn't recognize Job because just to see the state, they're like, Are you him? Are, are you really our, our, our brother Job who gave 7,000 sheep just to clothe the poor? Are you really him? They had to ask him all these questions, knowing that only the man that they know as Job or Job could answer it. Because just looking at him, they couldn't recognize it. They couldn't believe it. Read. Are thou he who had ordered 3,000 cattle to do the plowing of the field for the poor? Whether then have thou glory gone? Are thou he who had golden couches, and now thou sittest upon a dunghill? Whether then have thou glory gone? Where did, I, where did I go with God? Where has it gone? How did this happen to you? What, John, what did you do to make this happen to you? What sin have you committed? And most of the time, this is the thing, most of the times when a lot of people see you in that state, they think that you've done something wrong. No, no, you could have been, you, 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 Still been righteous with the most high, still having the righteousness. But sometimes the most high makes certain things happen to test our faith. Because a lot of us can come, come go and proclaim the most high and say this and say that and say this and say that. But if you don't, if you don't really, if you the most high wants to know how much faith you have sometimes, not by you just saying, but you show it. He needs us to know it. He was well, exactly, he chastised those who he lost. So this is the thing. Job was, 
the most high was, was showing Satan how faithful Job was. Because the most high knew how faithful Job was, Satan didn't know how faithful Job was. So the most high is like, okay, all right, I'm going to show you how faithful my servant Job is. Because you think that he's just doing it because of the blessings that I'm giving him. All right, this is it. You're going to see now. Read. Are thou he who had 60 tables set for the poor? Are thou he who had censors, censors for the fine perfume made of precious stones? And now thou art in a maldorious state? Whether then had thy glory gone? Are thou he who had golden candlebrush set upon silver stands? And now must thou long for the natural gleam of the moon? Where then has thy glory gone? Are thou the one who had ointment made of the spices of frankincense, and now thou art in a state of repulsiveness? Whether then has thy glory gone? Art thou he who laughed the wrongdoers and sinners to scorn, and now thou hast become a laughing stock to all? Whether then has thy glory gone? And when Eliphaz had for a long time cried and lamented, while all others joined him, so was the commotion so, so that the commotion was very great, I said to them, Be silent, and I will show you my throne and the glory of its splendor. My glory will be everlasting. The whole world shall perish, and its glory shall vanish, and all those who hold fast to it will remain beneath. But my throne is in the upper world, and its glory and splendor will be to the right of the Savior in the heavens. <laughs> My throne exists in the life of the holy ones, and its glory in the imperishable world. For rivers will he dry up, and their arrogance shall go down to the depth of the abyss. But the streams of my land in which my throne is erected shall not dry up, but shall remain unbroken in strength. So Job understood, Job understood that, listen, it's not what I have down here that is my riches and my glory. It's not what you see outside, outwardly. That's not, that's not who I am. That, that, that's not my riches. My riches actually is in the heaven. That's why the scripture tells us that don't try to store up your churches upon earth where moth and dust do corrupt, but rather store up your treasures in heaven where the thief can't come and get it and it can't be corrupted. We have to have that heavenly, that spiritual treasure, and not the physical ones that we try to accumulate on a daily basis. That's not what it, that's not what it's about. Job understood this. So this is what he's telling me. He's like, listen, you want to see my glory? You want me to tell you what my glory is? My glory is not there. It's actually up there, right beside the Savior. It's in the heavens, right beside the Savior. <laughs> Read. Testament of Job chapter 7, verse 39. The kings perish and the rulers vanish, and their glory and pride is as a shadow in a looking glass. But my kingdom lasts forever and ever, and its glory and beauty is in the chariot of my father. Read. Chapter 8, verse 1. And when I spoke thus, then Eliphaz became angry and said to the other friends, For what purpose is it that we have come here with our hosts to comfort him? Behold, he upbraids us. Therefore, let us return to our country. Behold, he upbraids us. He's making us look like a fool. Even though we come here to comfort him and to, you know, try to help him out in the state, he's, 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 he's making us look like we don't, we don't know, that we don't know what's going on. This is Eliphaz. This is supposed to be one of his country taking offense to what Job just said. Read This man sits here in misery, worm-eaten, amidst an unbearable state of putre putrefaction, and yet he challenges it, saying, say, kingdom shall perish in their rulers, but my kingdom says he shall last forever. Eliphaz then rose in great commotion and turned away from them in great fury and said, I go hence. And we have indeed come to comfort him, 
but he declares war to us in view of our armies. So them coming to Job, you know, they didn't come just three of them by themselves. They came with all their armies, all their valiant men. And they were like, this, he, he's saying that the rulers are going to vanish away and kingdom are going to come to naught, but his kingdom is going to be forever. They're like, who, who is this guy? <laughs> this, ain't, this, this ain't our brother Joe back. This ain't him, because look at him. You, he has no kingdom. What is he talking about? But he said, Job understood the heaven. He, un he understood the, the mysteries of the Most High. He understood that it was the Most High's kingdom that was the most important kingdom, and not what we see on earth. Read chapter, uh, verse. Verse 4. But then Baldad seized him by the hand and said, Not thus ought one to speak to an afflicted man, and especially to one stricken down with so many plagues. Behold, we, being in good health, dare not approach him on account of the offensive odor, except with the help of plenty of fragrant aroma. But thou, Eliphaz, art forgetful of all this. Let me speak plainly. Let us be mag magnanimous, magnanimous. magnanimous and learn what is the cause. Must he, in remembering his former days of happiness, not become mad in his mind? So they think Job is mad. They're like, listen, Bildad is like, just leave him alone. Don't you see he's mad? Don't you see he's, 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 he's lasting? Don't worry about it. Don't get mad at what he's saying. Just, you know, leave him. Read it. Who should not be altogether perplexed seeing himself thus lapsed into misfortune and plagues? But let me step near him that I may find by what cause is he thus? And thou that rose and approached me, saying, Art thou Job? And he said, Is thy heart still in good keeping? And I said, I do not hold fast to the earthly things, since the earth with all the inhabitants is unstable. But my heart holds fast to the heaven, because there is no trouble in heaven. Then Baldad rejoined and said, We know that the earth is unstable, for it changes according to season. At times it is in the state of peace, at times it is in the state of war. But of the heaven we hear that it is perfectly steady. But art thou truly in a state of calmness? Therefore let me ask and speak. And when thou answerest me to the first, to my... To my first word, I shall have a second question to ask. And if again thou answerest in well set words, it will be manifest that thy heart has not been unbalanced. And I said, Upon what does thou upon what does thou thou set thy hope? And I said, Upon the living God. Upon the living God, not upon my riches. This is what Job we were saying to him. I, I set my hope upon the living God. Read. And he said to me, who deprived thee of all thou didst possess, and who inflicted thee with these plagues? And I said, God. And he said, If thou still placest thy hope upon God, how can he do wrong in judgment, having brought upon thee these plagues and misfortunes, and having taken from thee all thy possessions? And since he has taken these, it is clear that he has given thee nothing. No king will disgrace his shoulder, his soldier who has served him well as a bodyguard. And I answered, saying, Who understands the depths of the Most High and his wisdom to be able to accuse the Most High of injustice? And Balad said, Answer me, O Job, to this. Again I say to thee, If thou art in a state of calm reason, teach me if thou hast wisdom. Why do we see the sun rise in the east and set in the west? And again, when rising in the morning, we find him rise in the east. Tell me thy thoughts about this. And I said, why shall I betray battle for the mighty mysteries of the Most High? And should my mouth stumble in revealing things belonging to the Master? Never. So Job was saying, listen, why am I going to talk about the mysteries of the Most High? That has nothing to do with me. That's for the most I to know. That's not for me to know. Read. Who are we that we 
should pry into matters concerning the upper world while we are only of flesh, nay, earth, and ashes. In order that you know that my heart is sound, hear what I ask you. Through the stomach cometh food and water you drink through the mouth. So Job is asking him a question now. Job is like, listen, I'm asking you this now, answer me. Start over, read it again. Through the stomach cometh food and water you drink through the mouth. And then it flows through the same throat. And when the two go down to become excrement, they again part. Who affects this separation? And all that said, I do not know. And I rejoined and said to him, If thou dost not understand even the exits of the body, how canst thou understand the celestial circuit? So this was a this was a question to end all questions. <laughs> all right, because you 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 can't even understand the function of the body. You don't even know how uh, uh, your waist is separated from uh, the liquid or or your urine. You don't even know how that happens, even though they go through the same line, the same track. But there's a separation. How does that happen? Who does that? Can you tell me how does that work? They don't even know that, but they want to ask Job the things of the Most High God. They want to know about the celestial and the heavenly things, the mysteries of the Most High God. But yeah, you don't even know the mysteries of the whole, of the of the human body. Read. Then so far rejoined and said. We do not inquire after our own affairs, but we desire to know whether thou art in a sound state. And behold, we see that thy reason has not been shaken. What now does thou wish that we do for thee? So they're like, listen, we see that you're still wise, even though you're in this state though. You ain't stupid, and you definitely ain't mad. Because these are questions you're posing to us that we know we cannot answer. So they have to, they have to change the, the, the conversation and say, listen, what, what can we do for you? How can we help them? Read. Behold, we have come here and brought the physicians of three kings, and if thou wishest, thou mayest, thou, thou mayest be cured by them. Physicians of three kings, and if thou wishest, thou mayest be cured by them. So they're like, listen, we got some doctors for you. You need, you need some doctors, Joe? Because we got some doctors here to help you. Because you don't look good. Even though you don't sound right, but you, you look like you need a doctor. Read. But I answered and said, my cure and my restoration cometh from the Most High, the maker of physicians. Everything that they were there bringing to Job, Job was just shutting them down. That's why he said, like, listen, stop this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Chapter 9, verse 1. When I spoke thus to them, behold, there my wife, Sintis, came running, dressed in rags, from the service of the master by whom she was employed as slave, though she had been forbidden to leave, lest the kings, on seeing her, might take her as captive. And when she came, she threw herself prostrate to their feet, crying and saying, Remember, Eliphaz and your other friends, what I was once with, what I was once with you, and how I have changed, and how I am now dressed to meet you. So she's seen the three kings now. And she's like, You, you remember me? You remember when you came before and you saw me on my splendor and glory? And you see how I've changed? You, you see how I've changed and how the way I'm dressed now to, to meet you? Read. Then the kings broke forth in great weeping, and being in double perplexity, they kept silence. But Eliphaz took his purple mantle and cast it about her to wrap herself with it. But she asked him, saying, I ask as favor of you, my lords, that you order your soldiers that they should dig among the ruins of our house, which fell upon my children so that their bones could be brought in a perfect state to the tombs. 
For as we have, owing to our misfortune, no power at all, so we may at least see their bones. For I have, for have I like a brute, the mother, the motherly feeling of wild beasts that my ten children should have perished on one day, and not to one of them could I give a decent burial. And the kings gave order that the ruins of my house should be dug up. But I prohibited, saying, say, do not, do not go to the trouble in vain, for my children will not be found, for they are in the keeping of their maker and ruler. So he's asking the three kings, listen, take your man and go dig up, go dig up my house, go dig up the ruins of my house, so I, I can be able to find my children to give them a decent burial. And Job was like, listen, don't even bother that. Don't, don't bother doing that. I know exactly where my children are. I know who has my dead children. I, I know. Read. Therefore prove, therefore prove unto us the truth. But I said to them, raise me that I may stand up. And they lifted me. Where, where, where verse are you at? I'm not at verse. No. 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 Verse 9, and the king answered and said, Who will gainsay that he is out of his mind and raised? For while we desire to bring the bones of his children back, he forbids us to do so, saying, They have been taken and placed the keeping of their maker. Therefore prove unto us the truth. But I said to them, Raise me that I may stand up, and they lifted me, holding up my arms from both sides. And I stood upright and pronounced first the praise of the Most High. And after the prayer, I said to them, Look with your eyes to the east. And they looked and saw my children with crowns near the glory of, of the King and ruler of heaven. So Job is like, Listen, this is where my children are. Look, look to the east. And when they look, they see his children with crowns upon their head in a pleasant place. Happy and happy more than ever. Read. And when my wife Sita saw this, she fell to the ground and prostrated herself before the Most High, saying, Now I know that my memory remains with the Most High. So automatically now her faith came back. Now she, now she knows the Most High now. When she, when she saw her children that mean, you know, being okay, that the Most High had them, she's like, okay, man, I know I know that the Most High is with me. Read. And after she had spoken this, and the evening came, she went to the city, back to the master whom she served as slave, and laid herself down at the manager, at the manger, manger of the cattle, and died they're from exhaustion. So eventually she had to give up the ghost. She was just exhausted. She couldn't, she couldn't, she couldn't go on no more. Even though Joe was trying to encourage her and say, listen, endure this with me. Endure this with me. Stop, stop trying to convince me to not have faith in the whole style. And eventually she died. Read. And when he, and when her Despotic master searched for her and did not find her. He came to the fold of his herds, and there he saw her stretched out upon the manger dead, while all the animals around were crying about her. And all who saw her wept and lamented, and the cry extended throughout the whole city, and the people brought her down and wrapped her up and buried her by the house which had fallen upon her children. And the poor of the city made a great mourning for her and said, Behold, this Cytus, whose like in nobility and in glory is not found in any woman, alas, she was not found worthy of a proper tomb. The dirge for her will find will will you find in the record. So she died and not when I was even buried like an ordinary woman in a proper tomb. Even though she had all this plan from before. And that was the that was the goal because of her unbelief in the beginning. Read. 
chapter 10, verse 1. But Eliphaz and those that were with him were astonished at these things, and they sat down with me and replying to me, spoke in boastful words concerning me for, set, for 27 days. They repeated it again and again that I suffered deservedly, thus for having committed many sins. So they're like, Job, you reason why you're in this? Because of all the sins you committed. That's why you're in this state, Job. You did this and you did that and you did this. Everything you did, this is why. Look, because of your sins. Repeated it for 27 days. You had somebody over you, telling you, yeah, you know why, you know why this is happening? What did you do last time? You, you, you did this and, yeah, you, all, of, all, of, all of this thing you, you, you did, that's why you go through all of this. Not knowing that you were, you were righteous, you are still holding your righteousness even though all of these afflictions are coming upon you. But then you got somebody else in your ears telling you, no man, you did this, you must have did something. Try to remember, what were you doing yesterday? Who were you with yesterday? What did you do yesterday? You sure you didn't come in a city? And this is, this, is, this, is, this is the perception that, you know, some of us fall in at times. When we see people going through stuff, we're like, man, what happened? What did this person, this person must have did something, this person ain't living right. But if you're living right, you know this would be happening to you. And not knowing that, it's just the most I see how faithful you are. He just wants to know how faithful you are to him. So he will allow the devil to come and do some stuff to you. Knowing that there's a boundary that's set in place to exactly what the devil can do to you. How far he can go concerning you. And it's just for you to just endure all of that. Because the minute that you endure, endure that, you're going to be saved. That's what the scripture says. The word who will go to the end, the same shall be saved. We who are the children of Israel are gonna go through some stuff. Knowing that we know, knowing what we know now, we're gonna go through a whole bunch of stuff. Baptizing everything. You're gonna have people that's gonna come against us, especially our own people. Are gonna come against us and it's gonna tell, tell, tell us all kinds of stuff. Telling us that Christ is white and everything, everything else. And tell us that it's okay to eat pork, shrimp, and lobster. They're gonna probably even sell you out and even try to kill you. These are the things that we're gonna we're gonna learn, we have to learn how to endure. Because we're not saved yet. We're not saved yet. The Christian church can say that all they want, but none of them is saved. None of them. The only way you're gonna be saved is if you endure until the end. If you are able to sustain all the hardship that comes at you until Christ comes back. That's the only way you're going to be saved. Until if, if, if you don't do that, you ain't going to be saved. And I don't care what book you're reading. That's what the Bible says. Read. Chapter 10, verse 2. They repeated it again and again that I suffered deservedly thus for having committed many sins and that there was no hope left for me. But I resorted to these men in zest of my contention myself. And they rose in anger, ready to part in wrathful spirit. And Elihu conjured them to stay yet a little while until he would have shown them what it was. For he said, so many days did you pass allowing Job to boast that he is just, but I shall no longer suffer it. So this, uh, 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 who was this guy? Uh, Eli. Yeah, he, he, he just, they were just on Job. They were like, listen, you, you make it, remember when Job was talking and boasting? Listen, no, nah, we ain't having that no more. This is what he's saying. Read. Read that again. What could, for, for, he, for he said, so many days did you pass allowing Job to boast that he is just, but I shall no longer suffer it. For from the beginning did I continue crying over him, remembering his former happiness. But now he speaks boastfully, and in overbearing pride, he says that he, he has his throne in the heavens. So just because of Job's, Job's belief, they're like, he's boasting. He's, he's, he's making himself higher than what his state looks like. <laughs> like, you're, you're sitting in a dungeon, dungeon and you're talking about the heavens. They can't fathom that. They can't understand.
understand that. Read. Therefore, hear me, and I will tell you what is the cause of his destiny. So like, I'm like, let, let me tell you how Job is going to end up. Let me tell you his destiny. Read. Then imbued with the spirit of Satan. Now Satan entered into this brother. When this brother started to open up his mouth not to speak against you, this, that, that was the door now that he opened up to Satan now to come inside and say, yeah, yeah, I got one now. Let me use him now to be able to, 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 to cast down Job more, to step on Job, especially when he's down and kick him some more. Read. And you spoke hard words which are written down in the records left of Elihu. And after he had ended, the Most High appeared to me in a storm and in clouds and spoke, blaming Elihu, and showing me that he who had spoken was not a man, but a wild beast. So this brother had even in his own records, you can go into his records and see the harsh words that he was speaking against Job. And the Most High would tell Job, listen, this man right here, like saying, all of it, he's not even a man. He's a beast. He's like an animal because he has no compassion. None. Read. And when the Most High had finished speaking to me, the Most High spoke to Eliphaz, "Thou and thy friends have sinned in that ye have not spoken the truth concerning my servant Job." So this is the Most High speaking to all three of them now. Read. Therefore, rise up and make him bring a sin offering for you, in order that your sins may be forgiven. For were it not for him, I would have destroyed you. And so they brought to me all that belonged to a sacrifice. And I took it and brought for them a sin offering. And the Most High received it favorably and forgave them their wrong. Then when Eliphaz bowed that and so far, saw that the Most High had graciously pardoned their sin through his servant Joel, but he had, but he did not deign, deign to pardon any. Then did Eliphaz begin to sing a hymn while the others responded. Their soldiers also joined him while standing by the altar. So the Most High was saying, listen, you all have sinned. All of you have sinned. For you guys to be forgiven of your sin, you have to get, give Job a sin offering to go offer up for you. But mind you, when you read back into the testament of Job, we knew, knowing that Job was in Egypt, during the time when the children of Israel was in Egypt, we knew that it wasn't Job offering these sacrifices himself. He wasn't the one killing the animals and all of that. Job had to go to the children of Israel, the priests, at that time to offer his sacrifices. Because at that time, the children of Israel came out of Egypt and was, and, and, and was being set up and was taking out their land, taking down lands to come into the land that was promised to them by the Most High. So Job knew about the Levites. He knew about the children of Israel. He knew that you had to go to the priests. Even the children of Israel couldn't just offer sacrifices by themselves and they, they kill and sprinkle blood on the altar. For them to have atonement for their sins or be forgiven of any sins, the children of Israel had to bring an offering, a sin offering, whatever it was, or a sacrifice to the Levites, to the priests, so that they could be forgiven of their sins and have atonement. Job understood this. So this is what Job had to do concerning these three, his three kinsmen. He had to make them bring, bring him a sin offering, and he went to the children of Israel, the priests, the Levites, to offer it up so that they could have been forgiven of their sin. That they sinned against Job. So some would read this and say, well, wow, Job was offering sacrifices. What? No. If the children of Israel, who was the chosen people for the most time, if them couldn't just offer sacrifices alone by themselves, but had to do, make the priest do it, how can Job do it, especially he's from the seed of Esau? Right? Read. And Eliphaz spoke. What, 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 what verse 13? And Eliphaz spoke thus Taken off is the sin, and our injustice gone. But Elihu, the evil one, shall have no remembrance among the living. His luminary is extinguished and has lost its light. So, this, this one guy, Elihu, like, most I was fed up with him. 
There was, he, there was, he could have offered a thousand sacrifices. If there was no forgiveness for him, he was done. He was done. Read. The glory of his lamp will announce itself for him, for he is the son of darkness and not of light. The doorkeepers of the place of darkness shall give him their glory and beauty as shared. His kingdom has vanished, his throne has moldered, and the honor of his stature is in Hades. He's going straight to hell, basically. There, 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 there is no redemption for him, none. Read. For he had loved the beauty of the serpent and the scales of the dragon. His gall and his venom belongs to the northern one. For he did not own himself unto the Most High, nor did he fear him, but he hated those whom he had chosen. Job, he hated Job. He hated Job, he hated everything that Job was saying concerning the Most High. Read. Thus the Most High forgot him, and the Holy Ones forsook him. His wrath and anger shall be unto him desolation. And he will have no mercy in his heart nor peace, because he had the venom of an adder on his tongue. Righteous is the Most High, and his judgments are true. With him there is no preference of persons. There is no respect of persons with the Most High. He don't love one person special that he loves everybody else. The Most High don't love Elder Ricard more than he loves each and every one of us. He don't love me more than he loves all of us. No. Everybody, he's, he, he loves everybody the same. Especially when we're living according to his laws, statutes, and commands. There's no respect of persons. Read. For he judges all alike. Behold, the Most High cometh. Behold, the Holy Ones have been prepared. The crowns and the prizes of the victors precede them. Let the saints rejoice. Let their hearts exult in gladness. And for they shall receive the glory which is in store for them. Chorus. They're singing songs. These are the three that are singing songs. Okay? And you're reading, you're going to the chorus now of the song that they're singing. Read. Our sins are forgiven, our injustice has been cleansed, but Elihu had no remembrance among the living. After Eliphaz had finished the hymn, we rose and went back to the city each to the house where they lived. And the people made a feast for me in gratitude and delight of the Most High. And all my friends came back to me. And all those who had seen me in my former state of happiness asked me, saying, what are those three things here amongst us? So after all of this, after Job went and offered the sacrifices for these three and, it's, uh, and not one, he, his, 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 his affliction, that seven year affliction was done. Now, his, 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 those three friends took him back into their land, made a great feast. All of his friends them that left him when he was upon that dunghill came back to him. And now we're gonna see now his former state, are we? But I, being desirous, it's like chapter 11, verse one, but I, being desirous to take up again my work of benevolence to benevolence. benevolence for the poor, asked them, saying, Give me each a lamb for the clothing of the poor in their state of nakedness, and for drachmas, drachmas of silver or gold. Then the Most High blessed all that was left to me. And after a few days, I became rich again in merchandise. So after a few days, Job had all of his riches and more. That's what I'm saying. We got to endure. Because we're going to look at today and say, man, why am I going through this? And people are going to say, man, why are you going through this? What did you do? I know that, listen, it was, it's only for a time. It's only for a time. And the most I just wants to see how you're going to endure. And when you endure, are you going to curse him? Are you going to have faith in him? Read. Then the chapter verse three. Then the Most High blessed all that was left to me, and after a few days, I became rich again in merchandise, in flocks, and all things which I had lost, and I received all in double number again. So it was doubled. What he had in the beginning.
beginning, he had twice as much in the end. And when you read the book of Job in the Bible, it tells you that. Read it. Then I also took as wife your mother and became the father of you ten in place of the ten children that had died. So this is when he's telling his children now that listen, I took your, your mother to wife and became the father of you, knowing that the children that Dinah had was not Job's children. It was not his biological children, it's actually her ten children. But because he married her, he became the father of them. So the most I gave him back because those children, even though they were from another man, they still love Job as their own father, their own biological father. Read. Verse 5. And now, my children, let me admonish you. Behold, I die. You will take my place. Only do not forsake the most high. Be charitable towards the poor. Do not disregard the feeble. Take not unto yourselves wives from strangers. So this is him telling the children of Israel again. Don't take unto yourself wives from strangers. Don't go to another nation and take unto yourselves wives. Because he understood. Job understood why. He was following the God of the Hebrews. He understood. He understood the records that was left from our forefathers. He had them. He lived by them. Read. Take not unto yourselves wives from strangers. Behold, my children, I shall divide among you what I possess, so that each may have control over his own and have full power to do good with his share. And after he had spoken thus, he brought all his goods and divided them among his seven sons. But he gave nothing of his goods to his daughters. Then they said to their father, our Lord and father, are we not also thy children? Why then dost thou not also give us a share of thy possessions? Then Job to his daughters, do not become angry, my daughters. I have not forgotten you. Behold, I have preserved for you a possession better than that which your brothers have taken. So he's like, listen, don't worry, I haven't forgotten you. What I've got for you is better than what your brothers have got, better than silver and gold, better than cattle, livestock, ripped up, garments, and all of that. Read. And he called his daughter, whose name was Day, or Yemima, and said to her, Take this double ring used as a key and go to the treasure house and bring me the golden casket that I may give you your possession. And she went and brought it to him and opened it and took out three string girdles about the appearance of which no man can speak. For they were not earthly work, but celestial sparks of light flashed through them like rays of the sun. So these these, these string girdles were from the heavens. This was given to Job from the heavens. Read. And he gave one string to each of his daughters and said, Put these as girdles around you in order that all the days of your, your life they may encircle you and endow you with everything good. And the other daughter, whose name was Kasiah, said, Is this the possession of which thou sayest is better than that of our brothers? What now? Can we live on? Can we live on this? So they don't understand what they have. They're like, can we eat this? What is this? <laughs> what is this piece of string? My, my father gave me this piece of string. What is this? Read. And their father said to them, Not only have not only have you here suf not only have you here sufficient to live on. But these bring you into a better world to live in, in the heavens. Or do you not know, my children, the value of these things here? Here then, when the Most High had deemed me worthy to have compassion on me and take off my body, the plagues and the worms, he called me, handed me these three strings. And he said to me, rise and gird up thy loins like a man. I will demand of thee to declare thou unto me. And I took them and girt them around my loins, and immediately did the worms leave my body, and likewise did the plagues and my whole body take took new strength through the most high. So all these three these three strings, three strings that the most high gave Job took away every all the plague, all the worms out of his body. 
made Job come back now into it, into his his, 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 his his state that he was before, and have him even a strength back again. Read it. And thus I passed on, and as though I had never suffered, but also in my heart I forgot the pains that spoke the Most High unto me in his great power and showed me all that was and will be. So these strings actually gave him access. He, Job, Job had access not only to healing, but he forgot all that he went through. He forgot all that affliction that he went through for the seven years from Satan. And he was able to see the future. He was able to see what was gonna what, what was gonna come in the end. Breathe. And now then, my children, in keeping these, you will not have the enemy plotting against you, nor evil intentions in your mind, because this is a charm from the most high. Rise then and gird these around you before I die, in order that you may see the angels come at my parting so that you may behold with the wonder the powers of the Most High. Then rose the one whose name was Day and girt herself, and immediately she departed her body as her father had said, and she put on another heart, as if she never cared for earthly things. So when she put it, when she girded herself with this, this string, automatically she changed. She changed. Read. She sang angelic hymns in the voice of angels, and she chanted forth the angelic praise of the Most High while dancing. Then the other daughter, Kasiah by name, put on the girdle, and her heart was transformed so that she no longer wished for worldly things, and her mouth assumed the dialect of the heavenly rulers, and she sang the, the knowledge of the work of the high place, and if anyone wishes to know the work of the heavens, he may take an insight into the hymns of Kasiah. Then did the other daughter by the name of Amalthea's horn gird herself, and her mouth spoke in the language of those on high, for her heart was transformed, being lifted above the worldly things. And when you read Job chapter 42, and verse 14, it tells you about his daughter. It tells, it tells you the name. So, ever, uh, the daughter that you're seeing right now is the same thing in the Bible. Same, same name and everything. Jemima, uh, Keziah, uh, uh, and Almathia. Al 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 okay, read. She spoke in the dialect of the cherubim, singing the praise of the ruler of cosmic powers, and extolling their they stolen his glory. And he who desires to follow the vest vestiges of the glory of the Father will find them written down in the prayers of Almalthia's horn. Chapter 12, verse 1. After these three had finished singing hymns, did I, Nahor, brother of Job, sit down next to him as he lay down. And I heard the marvelous great things of the three daughters of my brother, one always succeeding the other amidst awful silence. And I wrote down this book containing the hymns, except the hymns and signs of the Holy Word, for these were the great things of the Most High. And Job lay down from sickness on his couch, yet without pain and suffering, because his pain did not take strong hold of him on account of the charm of the girdle, which he had wound around himself. So practically, Job just died of old age, with no pain or not. He just lie down there and gave up the ghost. Free. But after three days, Job saw the holy angels come for his soul. Instantly, he rose and took Sithera and gave it to his daughter, Day. And Kasiah he gave a censer. And to Amalthea Horn he gave a timbre in order that they might bless the holy angels who came for his soul. So and we can we can verify this by going back into the Apocalypse of Paul. The Apocalypse of Paul showed that when you're righteous, you have the holy angels that are coming for your soul to bring you to that place of paradise, that place of life. But 
If you're unrighteous, then you got some demons waiting for you. Okay? So this is just giving you a description of what happens, especially when the soul leaves the body. When you're righteous, you got the holy angels that are ready to escort you, not to heaven. <laughs> okay? Not to heaven, but into this place of paradise, waiting until the first resurrection, which is when, when Christ comes back. Okay? Read. And they took these and sang and played on palsy and praised and glorified the Most High in the holy dialect. And after this he came, then after this he came, he who sitteth upon the great chariot and kissed Job, while his three daughters looked on, but the others saw it not. And he took the soul of Job, and he soared upward, taking her by the arm and carrying her upon the chariot, and he went towards the east. His body, however, was brought to the grave, while the three daughters marched ahead, having put on their girdles and singing hymns in praise of the Most High. Then held Nahor, his brother, and seven sons, with the rest of the people and the poor, the orphans, the feeble ones, a great mourning over him, saying, Woe unto us, for today has been taken from us the strength of the feeble, the light of the blind, the father of the orphans, the receiver of strangers has been taken off, the leader of the Arab, the cover of the naked, the shield of the widows, who would not mourn for the man of the Most High. And as they were mourning in this and in that form, they would not suffer him to be weak. After three days, however, he was finally put into the grave like one in sweet slumber, and he received the name of the good who will remain renowned throughout all generations of the world. This is why I will read the book. This is why you have the record of Job in the book. This is why, knowing that Job was from the seed of Esau. He was a so-called Caucasian. Job was not a black man. The Testament of Job tells us that, and also the Bible tells us that, if you know how to use precepts in the Bible correctly. <clears throat> Say that again. The daughters that he was telling, uh, or his sons he was telling that to marry the other nations, Who's the other nation he's talking about if he was a carpet? He's talking about the other nations that, that did not recognize the Most High and did not pay homage to the Most High because the other nations that they were sinning. Job came from the land of Esau, but was he unrighteous? He was not righteous. So it had nothing to do with uh, nationality? The reason why the Most High told the children of Israel that is because those other nations, they didn't revere the Most High God. They, they all were doing pagan and idol worship. From, from, from when Adam had came, from after, even after the flood, when Noah was on the earth, Enoch was on the earth, man was doing, man was doing wickedness. Homosexuality was nothing new when Sodom and Gomorrah was on the scene. That was way before that. They were doing all of that madness before the flood. So the Most High knew what these nations, he knew exactly how they were brought up and they were just following their fathers. So when the Most High chose the children of Israel, knowing that the children of Israel came from a righteous lineage from Adam, even though we know that all the people of the world came from Adam and Eve, but there was a righteous lineage. There was those that did right. And that's who the most I chose. So it didn't matter if you were uh, from Edom or from Jacob. Like what do you mean it didn't matter? I thought Esau's children were evil. Not all of them were evil. Job was evil. Okay. Esau was evil. And those who were following him, his children who followed him, those were the most I detested. So he was a white man and the brothers. Job actually, that's, that's what I'm saying. When you, when you go into the book of Josh, right? It, told, it tells us that the book of Joshua, Job was there as a counselor to Pharaoh, counseling Pharaoh how to depopulate or how to lessen the children of Israel when you go to Joshua 67 chapter. So is that a negative thing? That was a negative thing. But guess what? Though? 
Even though the counsel that Job even made against the children of Israel when they were in Egypt, it didn't work. Job saw that. So how is he a good man? Because he changed when he saw the power of the Most High God tear down fire on his army and put them in the Red Sea. And he saw the power and he saw that he's like, these people are special people. And that made Job change. He saw the power of the Most High God. He, 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 the scripture says that Israel seeketh the sign, but the Gentiles, they seek wisdom. Our people, they got to seek to believe. You got to have placards and pictures to show them, listen, this is what it is. You, somewhere people might just talk to them, they won't believe. But if you go to somebody of another nation and really just show them, and they'll, they'll, they'll soak it up like that. They'll say, oh, wow, I never knew that, okay. And totally convert and start following you. And this is what it is. This, this, this is what happened to Job. Job saw the power, even though he came and made counsel against his children. The children of Israel. He saw how the Most High was with them, despite the counsels that he was given Pharaoh to take them down and depopulate them. Right in front of Job's eyes, the Most High took down Egypt. This big place that was a dynasty, that was the metropolis of all the earth, became nothing. Job saw that. And when Job saw that, he went back in his land and changed his ways and started to follow the God of the Hebrews. This is why we have this record of it. All right? So I know it might be sound confusing because, yeah, you're like, well, yeah. I mean, and, uh, well, the scriptures are said in Romans, well, Jacob of I love and Esau I hate. It. So this man who's from Esau now, how can he be so righteous? But he was, because when you go and you read, especially from Job, the testament of Job, it tells you that how hospitable was he was, not, not only to the fatherless, but also to the widow and to the poor. And that's what Christ means, come on. That was even one of Christ's main commands to look after the fatherless and the widows. Okay, going back to Isaiah 1 and 18, 1 and 19, it tells us that. So this is this is this is what it, this is why we're we seeing the record of Job right now. This is what, and I'm telling you, it, especially when you go online, I don't know if you've gone online and seen all these other evil Israelite brothers there. And you, they, you know, they're not calling any, any of them, their, their names and all of that. But they, this is the hate that they preach and say, well, yeah, you know, the white man is a devil. Listen, not all white people are bad. Eh? There's going to be, yeah, and there's going to be some, some white people are going to be more righteous than Israelites. Yeah. I've had a situation where the relation. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Jamaican family. Yeah. yeah. And parents didn't like it. Home people. Right? I ended up later on going with a white girl. Mm -hmm. Parents told me. Except if you like your, you were their own children. Yeah. Your, own, your own child. So come to my house anytime you want. You know. And they have another racist bone with their body. Yes, to my own people. Fight against it. So you don't need me to say anything. You, you, you understand this. You understand this. But then you have some white people too. Oh, oh, well, and we know what we know. <laughs> we know, we know exactly where they're coming from. We know, okay, we can be clear to say, well, yeah, this, this is Esau, this, this, this is come, this is Amalek. So, yeah, we, <laughs> yeah, I know where you're coming from, right? You, you know, by their fruits, you will know that. The scripture tells us that. And you're gonna believe me, you're, you're gonna have some white people that's gonna help us. I'm telling you, when people are looking to kill us, these are the people that's gonna have us up in their house, hiding us. Okay, so that is a question. Yeah. When we see the, the diseases in Africa, now with the new one. Yeah, there's a bowl line. The bowl Yeah. <laughs> for me, for me, I see that as the beginning of the, stay over there. Yeah, don't come near me. Yes. Don't go, don't come near me. Don't go near these black people because I see that. they could have one of them could have to go. Yes. You're, you're absolutely correct. But absolutely. I was, I was downtown on the street for two weeks ago. And white gentleman was walking towards me, an older white gentleman. And 
he saw me and he just stopped wearing his tracks. Right? And waited until I got the pass in my head. I said, you know what? He may say he's talking about this bowl thing. He's got this bowl thing in his head. Yeah. So he sees a black man and he goes, he stopped. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So to me, I see that as the beginning of that happening. Definitely. You're absolutely correct. 100%. And this is what, the t this, is, this is how they intended it to be. Yes. Because you can notice it's only affected black people. Yes. And any, any so called white people who, who, who got it, you know, automatically they're cured. Why? Because they put it out there that they have a cure, but it's only to work, it's only for white people. That's why the brother died. Well, they brother died because they kill him. <laughs> <laughs> they kill him. Well, they said they gave him something. The brother, the brother went into the hospital. Brother, on, yeah. The brother went into the hospital and they, they put it out in the news and when he came in, he was strong, in good health, all of that. Couple of days later, he was sick. He had, had all sicknesses that you could ever think of and he died. This big, strong man, all of a sudden, in a couple of days, he just died like that. He came into your, he, he, he's supposed to have Ebola and came into your care. And when you examine him, everything looked fine and normal. Even though you said you had Ebola. If that was the case then, and you examined it and run all these kinds of tests, wouldn't you have seen that, well, hey, there's something wrong with it. Yeah, they're, they're actually, are, this is the sickness side. Are you feeling this way? Are, are, are you having diarrhea? Are, are you bleeding from certain parts of your body? But then he, he was perfectly fine. And then a couple of days after, this brother was dead. But we know what they do. We know what they do. We know that, that they're selling people soaps with Ebola in it. Give away, not selling, they're giving away free soaps to people that's laced with Ebola. We know that they're over in Liberia, putting from out the height in the water. Yeah. Poisoning the people's the, the, the drinking water in the village that has that, that gives you the symptoms for how the will give you the symptoms of Ebola. This is what they're doing. We know that Red Cross is going into Africa, into that part of West Africa, and injecting people with vaccines that have Ebola in it. This is what they're doing. Yes, yeah, this is what they're doing to the people that are, you got the people that are kicking out a Red Cross out of there, they're like, get out of here, now. we don't want this vaccine here. Now, I have one more thing, uh, in the, this is about the case, right, because obviously it was, right? Yeah. Right? and um, when the plagues do hit, right, we're going to be playing. Definitely. That's what I see. Now. Definitely. I think it's 
only the black man. <laughs> the black man. The black woman can't be cured. Yeah. Nah, uh-huh. nah. She's a black woman, black man. Yeah, the black nurse that got the vaccination and she's so black. Oh, listen. She, 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 she probably knew exactly what was going on. She's a nurse. She's like, listen. I, 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 I don't want any of your vaccines. She probably told him that straight. Listen, no. I'm a nurse. I, I know I know what this is. That's speculation. <laughs> but but it's, it's only they have no cure for black people. Mm-hmm. We say that they, they actually do have a cure it's called Garcian Cola. It comes from Africa, but when you see if you type it in online, if you type it on any social site that you have, they will log you out of your social site and cancel your account. Well, I wonder why. Many people that as soon as they hashtag it, their account closed and they say their account's closed because they hashtag that that cure. So anytime you doesn't make sense. Well, because they know they control the media, they so control the social media. So people that are making posts and saying this is the cure for Ebola, they automatically shut down the whole page. Okay. So they can do that, but they can't stop ISIS. He left seven sons and three daughters, and there were no daughters found on earth as fair as the daughters of Job. The name of Job was formerly Jobab, and he was called Job by the Most High. He had lived before his plague 85 years, and after the plague he took the double share of all, hence also his years he doubled which is 170 years. Thus, he lived altogether 255 years. And he saw sons of his sons unto the fourth generation. It is written that he will rise up with those whom the Most High will reawaken to our Lord by glory. Amen. So this is the resurrection when Christ comes back. So that's the testament of Job. All right? Job or Job? Yo, because there was no jail. J- but you're absolutely correct. Alright, so with that, I would say shalom. Let's get back to the question. Yeah, let's get back to the question. <laughs>